Good day everyone! How are you guys? I hope you are doing well. Now you are about to watch our learnings from our class in Heritage Tourism with Dr. Francis Paramas. We will share our knowledge about the Republic Act 10066 which is the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009. We have Article 2, Section 3, the definition of terms. Article 3, the cultural properties in the Philippines and some examples from foreign countries. And last but not the least, we have the National Cultural Treasure. Again, this is Heritage Tourism and here I present to you TM5A. Thank you, Ms. Joanna. Mabuhay marhay na aldaw ay Marticio Silji Solis. What is Republic Act Number 10066? The National Cultural Heritage Act, also known as Republic Act Number 10066, is a Philippine law that established the Philippine Registry of Cultural Property and other preservation measures for historical structures that are more than 50 years old. The Act defines cultural property as all products of human creativity that reveals people's and nation's identity, natural history, specimens and sites, whether public or privately owned, movable or immovable, tangible or intangible. The state intends to create a balanced environment in which the historic past coexists in harmony with modern society and manage heritage resources in a stewardship spirit for the inspiration and benefits of present and future generations through this law. That is all. Up next is Ms. Jed Salvador and she will be discussing the importance of Republic Act number 10066. Thank you, Ms. Artricia. Mabuhay! I am Jed Anferni Salvador. I will be discuss the importance of RA-166. What is RA-166? The goal of this law is to safeguard, preserve, conserve, and promote the nation's cultural history. As well as the ethnicity of local communities, it also aims to establish and strengthen cultural institutions and protect cultural workers and ensure their professional development and well-being. The state seeks to achieve a balanced environment in which the historic past coexists in peace with modern society, as well as to administer heritage resources in a spirit of stewardship for the inspiration and benefit of current and future generations through this law. That's all. Up next is Ms. Cristel will be discussing antique and archaeological area. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Thank you, Ms. Jed. Mabuhay! I am Crystal May Enriquez. Today, I will explain what the antique and archaeological area is. When it says antique, this shall refer to a cultural property found locally which is 100 years in age, more or less the production of which has ceased. Its Latin word is antiquus. It means old and ancient. These are an item perceived as having value because of its aesthetic, or historical significance. It is an object that represents a previous era or the time period in human history. What the archaeological area refer to any place, whether above or underground, underwater or at sea level, containing fossils, artifacts, and other cultural, geological, botanical, and geological materials. That's all. Up next is Miss Jelly and she will discuss conversion and cultural agencies. Thank you so much, Ms. Christelle. And now, before I start, let me first introduce myself. I am Jeline Alvivi Balcoba, and I am going to define conservation and cultural agencies. Let's get started. The first term is conservation. Conservation shall refer to all the processes and measures of maintaining the cultural significance of a cultural property. It is the act of trying to protect and preserve something or the limiting of how much of a resource is to use. An example of conservation is a program trying to protect the wetlands. Next is cultural agencies. Cultural agencies shall refer to the following national government agencies with their specific areas of responsibility, such as cultural property, books, Philippine history, documents, cultures, arts, and the languages. 
Cultural agencies refers to the range of creative activities that contributes to a society, including research, activism, and the arts. That would be all. Up next is Miss Sam, and she will be defining the terms cultural education and cultural property. Again, I am Jeline Alvivi Balcoba, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Miss Jeline Balcoba. Mabuhay, my name is Amanal Kubako, and today we will talk about cultural education and cultural property. So I will start by giving you a definition of culture. So cultures, it is the custom, the arts, the social institutions, and the achievements of a particular nation, people, and the social group. Culture has been called the way of life for an entire society. As such, codes of the manners, dress, language, religion, rituals, and arts. So for the first topic, culture education. So, it shall refer to the teaching and learning of cultural concepts and processes. This is a very important factor for us to preserve the culture and pass it down to the generations through stories. And next for the cultural property, it shall refer to all products of human creativity by which people and the nation rebuild their identity, including the churches, mosques, and other places and religious worships, school and natural history specimens and sites, whether public or privately owned, movable or removable, and tangible or intangible. And that's all. Up next, Miss Guillermo, she will be discussing the heritage zones and history. Thank you, Miss Sam Kubakub. Mabuhay, I'm Anne Kimberly Guillermo. And I'm here to define what is heritage zone and history. So let's start. Heritage zone is an area or site that has history of a society. Heritage zone must be protected because it can be presented as evidence of what happened in the past of a country. In the Philippines, they preserve heritage zone whether it is big or small because it has a long history that is related to the country. For example, the Fort Santiago, located at the walled city of Manila called Intramuros. It was built by Spanish governor Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Many soldiers have died in that prison, and even the national hero, Jose Rizal, was in prison before he was executed in Bagumbayan and is now called Rizal Park. Next is the history. History and heritage are both together. We can't define heritage without the word history. History is the record of what happened in the past, while heritage serves as the evidence. History shows how the country became the way it is now. For example, is the Rizal Park. It is the place where Jose Rizal was executed. It became a monument to commemorate or a tribute to the Philippine national hero who sacrificed his life for the country. That's all for the heritage zone and history. Next is Isla Baluyot, and she'll be discussing the historical landmarks and historical monuments. Bye! Thank you, Ms. Kim. Mabuhay, my name is Isla May Baluyot. For today, I will be discussing all about historical landmarks and historical monuments. First, historical landmarks. Historical landmarks, a structure that has significant historical architectural or cultural meaning and that has been given legal protection from alternation and destruction. Example of historical landmarks in the Philippines is Chocolate Hills, Banawi Rice Terraces, Mayan Volcano, Puerto Princesa, Taal Lake and Volcano, Tubata Reefs, Tinuy and Falls, Historical Philippine Landmarks, Leyte Landing Monuments. Historical Monuments Historical monuments shall refer to structures that honor illustrious person or commemorate events of historical value as declared by National Historical Institute. Example of historical monuments in the Philippines is Aguinaldo Shrine, Bagumbayan, Fort Santiago, Intramuros, Dapitan, Zamboanga del Norte, Edsa Shrine, Leyte Landmark Memorial Park, Biak na Bato. And that's all. Up next is Miss Denise and they'll be discussing about historical monuments, historical shrines, tangible cultural property. That's all. Thank you. 
Thank you, Miss Ayla. My name is Denise Jessica Janko. Just like what Miss Ayla said, historic monuments are fixed assets that are identifiable because of particular historic, national, regional, local, religious, or symbolic significance. Historical shrines. Shrines as markers of historical significance. Events occur on different places and events that later take on meaning for religious communities become important sites for shrines. For example, it's a shrine and Aguinaldo Shrine and Museum. Tangible cultural properties collectively refer to cultural products with a tangible from that possess high historic, academic, and artistic value to the Philippines. And that's all. Up next is Ira, and she'll be talking about cultural property. Thank you, Miss Denise. Mabuhay. My name is Ira Peralta. And I will be discussing what cultural property is. Cultural property can be religious or secular ground. What I mean by religious ground is that a property that has a connection with any religion such as Catholicism, Christianity, Buddhism, and so on. Meanwhile, secular grounds are property that has no connection with any religion. With that, cultural property is specifically designated by each state or country that have given importance for archaeology, prehistory, history, literature, art, or science. Despite not having a universal definition, cultural property is commonly tangible items that are part of the cultural heritage of a group or a society. That's all and up next is Ms. Irish and she'll be discussing the importance of cultural property. Take care and see you soon. Thank you Ms. Ira. Mabuhay! This is Irish Roxette Santos and I'll be discussing the significance of cultural property to the community, the environment, the future generations, and the world. To the community, cultural properties serve as a footprint of early civilization, thus knowing its history, people within the community could further understand people's creativity and how predecessors shape our culture and heritage. To the environment, cultural property improves human quality of life, thus people within the community will continue to protect our environment and our heritage landmarks. To the future generation, these are the representation of what we have inherited from our ancestors. And eventually, these are something that we can pass on. In that way, it naturally sends unity and belongingness within the society. To the world, Cultural property implies identities that could help cross-cultural understanding and conserve heritage of its nation. And that's all. Up next is Ms. Caitlin Tumangal discussing the National Museum of the Philippines. Thank you, Ms. Santos. Mabuhay everyone! I'm Caitlin Andy Tumangal and on this video, let's talk about National Museum of the Philippines or what we call Pambansa Museo ng Pilipinas. Do you know guys that National Museum was established on October 29, 1901? And also, it is an umbrella government organization that oversees numbers of national museums in the entire Philippines. That's why they are the one responsible for restoring and safeguarding of important cultural properties, sites, and reservations in the entire Philippines. Yeah, that's right. That's why they have an annual budget of 537.44 million as of 2001 and they also operate branches of museums throughout the entire country that's why this museum holds lots of history in the philippines that's all thank you and up next is miss villacorta and she will be discussing about san agustin church in manila 
That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Kately. Mabuhay! I am Miyuki S. Villacorta. And I'm going to share with you also the other example of cultural property. Next is Church of St. Augustine. St. Augustine Church, also known as the Immaculate Conception Paris, is a Roman Catholic church located in the city of Intramuros in Manila. The church which was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993. The construction started in 1587 and was completed in 1607. The church had to rebuild three times in all in 1571, 1575, and 1586 due to crusader inventions, natural disasters, and earthquakes, but still it remains the oldest church in the country of the Philippines. And that's all. Up next is Mrs. Sunshot, and she will be discussing the other example of cultural property. Thank you, Miss Miyuki. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Ansel Kudina Sunshot. And I will discuss the Bahay Natisa. What is Bahay Natisa? Bahay Natisa is the oldest Bahay na bato in Pasig. Don Cecilio Tech E. Cabrera built it in the early 1850s. Pasig City has had seven generations of the Tech family live there and key events in the country. The descendants of Don Cecilio still live here. During martial law, it was called Freedom House since both political parties could convey there. It was also the unofficial San Jose Barangay Headquarters. Santo Nino de Pasion resides in the Bahay Natisa. Every Sunday following Easter, the sick of the community gathered inside the house to receive Holy Communion and the parish priest blessing, Viatico Publico. The Bahay Natisa's ground-level walls were made of enormous adobe bricks that supported the second story's hardwood floors. The original tisa roof was destroyed during World War II and reconstructed with corrugated asbestos. As a bahay na bato in an urban context, the bahay na tisa has been featured in various movies and TV shows, including the Centennial Offering on Dr. Jose Rizal. As a result, the City of Pasig awarded the bahay na tisa the Dangal ng Pasig Award for Culture on June 30, 2009. A historic home known as the bahay na tisa stands prominently along Mark Arthur Roadway. The mansion was built in 1800 and owned by Captain Valentin, Don Nazario, and finally Don Antonio Constantino. This Andalusian mansion served as Dr. Jose Rizal's temporary residence in Malolos. With an ornate colonial style, you can admire the great craftsmanship involved in building this property. And that's all. So, up next is Maika, and she'll be discussing the Manunggu jar. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Maika Zapanta, and I'm going to talk about Manunggu jars. Manunggo jars was actually one of the numerous jars believed to be a burial site. The people saw this in Tabon Cave, Lipuon, Quezon, Palawan. On March 1964, it was discovered by Victor de Calan and Hans Kasten. Also, other volunteer workers from United States Peace Corps. Manunggo jars is one of the proof of our heritage by our Austronesian speaking ancestors despite the diversity of the Philippine people. It traces the cultures and beliefs of the different parts of the Philippines, like ethno-linguistic groups. It is also a testament of the importance of waters from our ancestors because they actually praise and believe in the power of the waters. A simple jar is the embodiment of history, experiences, and aspirations. Thank you, Ms. Sapanta. Good day, everyone, and mabuhay. I am Julian Gaing from TM5A. So today, we are talking about cultural properties. There are different cultural properties, but did you know that there are also foreign cultural properties? We will be talking about and I'll be giving some examples. Our first example, we have Tongariro National Park. Tongariro National Park is located in New Zealand. But did you know that Tongariro National Park is New Zealand's oldest national park? It is situated in the middle of the North Island, covering over 80,000 hectares. The home of three volcanic mountains and majestic landscape. For our next example, we have the Mammoth Cave National Park, which is located in Kentucky. Mammoth Cave is the longest known cave system 
with approximately 400 miles discovered and it is one of the four oldest attractions in North America. There is plenty more to do and explore in this wilderness area. You can do camping, hiking, horseback riding, fishing, and also kayaking. And that is all for my part. Up next is we have Miss Paringit who will be giving us more examples of foreign cultural properties. Thank you very much Miss Gillian Gaing. And good day everyone, I am Leiko Oparingit and I'll be discussing the topic Old Town of Lijiang. So, let's get started! Lijiang is located in the northwest of Yunnan province in southwest China. It is an ideal travel destination with a perfect combination of historical sites, snow-capped mountains, lakes, and ethnic minority cultures. It is famed worldwide for its UNESCO heritage site, the Old Town of Lijiang which dates back to over 800 years ago. The old town of Lijiang is China's best preserved minority ancient towns and the only one among China's ancient towns without city walls. It is also famous for its ancient architectures and orderly system of waterways. Thank you very much and let's move on to our next reporter, Ms. Cristel May Enriquez. Thank you, Ms. Leica. Mabuhay! Once again, I am Cristel May Enriquez here are the other two examples of cultural properties in foreign countries. We have Jai de las Muertes in Mexico. The Day of the Dead is a lively Mexican holiday that draws on indigenous and European traditions. Assure that the dead would be insulted by mourning or sadness. This celebrates the lives of the deceased with food, drink, parties and activities the dead enjoyed life. And the other one is the Jai Salmer Desert Festival in India. Three days before the full moon of February, people travel in groups to the Thor Desert in the Sam San Dunes to celebrate the Jai Salmer Desert Festival. Over the course of three days, the remote desert landscape comes to life with performances, folk music, and local being passed from generation to generation. That's all. Up next is Miss Gia and she will discuss what is the national cultural treasure. Thank you, Kristen. Mabuhay! I am Jaya Chilicot Alicante Manala. I have learned in the midterms lecture is a national cultural treasure. This is the unique objects found locally, artistic, cultural, historical, and our scientific value which is significant to the country and nation. The national cultural treasure can be classified into three. First is the immovable heritage, second is the tangible heritage, and lastly is the movable heritage. The natural cultural heritage is under the movable heritage. And that's all about national cultural treasure. Up next is Miss Alexa. We will be discussing the importance of national cultural treasure. Thank you, Miss Gia. Mabuhay! I'm Alexa Menes and I will be discussing the importance of national cultural treasure. The colonial history is remembered through a significant Spanish era, churches, stone houses, monuments, and other historical sites scattered all over the Philippines. It is essential to preserving our sense of self. It provides us with an unbreakable link to the past, to certain social values, beliefs, customs, traditions, and aspirations that allows us to identify with others and deepen our sense of unity, belonging, and to keep our integrity as a people. It is important to raise awareness on an important aspect of our national cultural treasure. The best way to preserve our national cultural treasure is the wealth of knowledge and skills that is transmitted through it from one generation to the next. And that's all! Up next is Mr. Brian, and they'll be discussing the examples of national cultural treasure. Thank you, Alexa. Mabuhay! I'm Brian Monar, and I will show you the example of natural cultural treasure. Let's go! The Bolinao skull is an archaeological discovery excavated in Bolinao, Pangasinan, in the Philippines. It is considered to be a one-of-a-kind due to its gold dental decoration that resembles fish scales. The gold scales were observed to be on the buccal surface of the upper and lower incisor and canning teeth. This human skull finds paved the way for further study of ornamental, burial, and trade focuses by the people of the Philippines, particularly during the pre-Spanish period. 
The next visit to Laparel Guest House. The Laparel Guest House is popularly known as Laparel White House, is a building in Baguio, Philippines, which houses a museum. The house was built by Roberto Laparel in the 1930s. It is made up of Nara and Yakao woods designed in Victorian style with its wooden planks, gables, and steep roof. According to believers, the house is haunted. The house has been featured in the television, especially during Halloween, with TV5, GMA, and ABS-CBN. In addition, year 2010, the horror movie White House featured the house. And that's all. Up next is Kaisel, and she will be discussing who took the chance of Itugao and Hila. Thank you, Mr. Brian. Mabuhay, I'm Kaisel Ann Corpus, a third-year student from BSTM 5A. I'll be discussing about two topics, which are the Hudhud Chants of Ifugao and Hilot. The Hudhud Chants of Ifugao is one of the three intangible cultural heritage elements in the Philippines, which is inscribed in the UNESCO representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2008. It is a narrative chant performed by the Ifugao communities for celebrating rice sowing season and harvest time. If you're familiar with the Banawi Rice Terraces or the Hagdan Hagdan Palayan, this tourist destination can be located in this province of Ifugao. This chant can also be used in funeral wakes and rituals and compromises for more than 200 chants, each divided into 40 episodes and can last up to several days for completion. Next is Hilot. The word Hilot in Filipino is used to describe a healer. Hilot is an ancient art of healing and considered as the oldest and most secret arts in the Philippines. It was their way of remedy intended to the people in the community who has ailments way back then, before we have these so-called modern medical doctors nowadays. It is believed that performing Hilot can relieve discomfort and other aches and pains in your well-being. Until now, Hilot still exists and performed by the Manghi Hilot or shamans. And that's all. Next is Miss Joanna who will be discussing about the Christmas in the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Kazil. Mabuhay. I am Joanna Marie Piliguto. Christmas in the Philippines. The Philippines is one of the two countries that predominantly celebrates the world's longest Christmas season that usually starts as early as September and will last up until the third Sunday of January, which is either Epiphany, the Feast of the Black Nazarene on January 9, or the Feast of the Santo Nino. You will see a lot of Christmas decorations inside and outside of our houses most especially a Christmas nativity scene decoration or what we call Belen, which is very common in Filipino households. You will hear Christmas carols everywhere you go. And when the time comes for the caroling, which the kids and even adults sing to door to door houses and collect their pomasco. Filipino Christmas is more centered on Jesus than on Santa Claus. We have Misa de Gallo, which is the 9-day long series of Masses that commence on Christmas Eve. Both the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day is a very important event for the Filipinos. And that's the end of our video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot. See you on the next video.